What's up guys, Doug from Motion Raceworks here today with another Motion 360 and today we're talking about drive shaft sensors. With the popularity of traction control, data in general, and data logging, it's become a huge uh, topic to have drive shaft data that's quality because the better the drive shaft data, the, more, the better work that the traction control system can do or whatever you have scaled uh, to come off of the drive shaft data. So whether your traction control is very simple or it's a dedicated box that works in a pretty complicated fashion, the better data is gonna help you. So in the early days of drive shaft data and data logging in general, the computer speeds weren't fast enough to really process a whole lot. And for that reason, they would just use two or four pickup style setups. Now that carried over to a few years ago when we dropped this drive shaft wheel on the market and what this does, this drive shaft wheel is 16 tooth pickup. So we actually started with an 18 tooth style setup, but we quickly learned that the MSD grid, the arc module, and a number of other EFI systems were only able to hold 16 pickup points because of their processor speed. So we're not quite to a point where we can have like 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 pickup points because simply put the uh, computer can't process that speed fast enough. But we have hit a fine, uh, great median between the two and four points of the old and what the computers can do now. So we have a 16 tooth pickup wheel that we now stand, have standard across the board. And we have it for a bunch of different uh, yokes and uh, that type of thing. So whether you have a nine inch or a 8.8 or a strange 12 bolt or a 12 bolt from GM, uh, Dana 60 or a few others, we have a drive shaft wheel for you. So this has been a really popular system. Like I said, it has 16 pickup points. This is the same drive shaft wheel that Dean Marinas uses on his X275 car, he uses it on his Pro Mod. We have tons of them across the board from drag radial to Pro Mod, bracket racing, anywhere in between. And what we experienced when we released this onto the market is everybody says, I can now see my 60 foot data in a way that I've never been able to see before. So we had a customer, Kevin McGurdy, he races uh, Pro Mod and Patrick Barnhill tunes a car. We put this drive shaft wheel on his car or Patrick and him did. So Kevin and Patrick were able to take that Pro Mod. It's a blown Hemi that spins 10,500 RPMs and they were able to go a personal best that first outing out because they were now able to see not only data in the 60 foot that they were never able to see because traditionally they had really noisy data in the first 60 feet. So if you don't have good data, you can't decide where to make changes as far as ignition coming in and out, power coming in and out. So it really just makes it hard. It's kind of a guessing game. And then down track, what they found is that the data was a lot less noisy. So there was less blips, peaks and valleys. It was a smoother data. And as a result, they were able to see where they could put power and where they couldn't and make changes accordingly. Uh, we've had that same type of feedback from just about everybody that uses this system. Because of the design of a Hall Effect sensor uh, that works off of uh, tooth pickup, it just creates a less noisy signal than a traditional magnet setup. There's less interference and that means better data. And like I said, the biggest pickup that a lot of folks will see is in the first 60 foot. If you have ever used a magnet style setup in the past, you'll see that the first 60 foot, there's actually kind of like a dead spot in data uh, for a good bit into the run before it really picks up and goes. And so if you have a clutch car and, and even nowadays a converter car, uh, being able to see that data from the moment the tire starts to move on is a huge thing. Since we have 16 teeth, it picks up smaller changes and therefore it picks it up sooner. So it also picks up zero speed sooner. So you can virtually see movement from zero speed. So that's just a huge benefit to this system. Now that I've talked about it and bragged it up a little bit, I'll just talk a little bit more about the system. So we have, this is a Ford nine inch style yoke. This is for a small pinion. It would be a 1812, this is a strange yoke. Every manufacturer almost has a different diameter on this section right here. So for that reason, we make a bunch of different sizes. We make 1812, 1875, 2125, 2187, and 2500. This covers almost every yoke we have ever seen to date. So what the collar does is it actually just sandwiches between the two halves. So the way this is designed is just like any other drive shaft wheel, but if you're unfamiliar, I'll show you how it works. This uh, is actually two halves that go around the yoke. So for that reason, whether the yoke's actually on the car or not, you can actually just 
uh, take the two halves and put it around. I just slid it on. And then just equally tighten the two halves until it's tight. You'll see a small gap, um, even when it's tight, here between the two halves. And that's fine because we actually cut these act after we uh, machine them. So that gap doesn't matter as long as it's even from side to side. It's going to make up that basically that semicircle in there is going to be the same space as all the rest of them. So that gap is perfectly fine. We get a lot of calls about that. That's just part of how we manufacture these and it doesn't affect the performance. Basically the sensor if you are not familiar with a gear tooth, this is the same style setup that's used on crank sensors. If you see some of the gear tooth style crank sensors. So this is actually just looking for the high spots and the low spots. So the this little gap down here in the mat bottom doesn't matter because once it gets past that tooth, it's at a low spot and it's waiting for the next tooth. So one of the big things that you'll want to take into account, especially depending on the diameter of sensor you're using, whether you're using ours or somebody else's, is making sure that this sensor is lined up so that the tooth is in the middle of the sensor. Now if it's cheated off to the side, you can see that it'll actually miss part of the, the, the sensor because of the sensor being round. So it's easy to, it needs to be aligned right there in the center. That's going to give you the best data. You also want to make sure that this sensor is square and perpendicular to the actual tooth there. So if you have it pitched like this, it's not going to get a good reading. If you have it pitched like this, it's possible to not get a good reading. And of course, like this can cause an issue as well. So we have two style sensors that we use. Uh, this one's just a good tried and true sensor. Uh, it's $50 thereabouts and it is just die hard. This, these sensors can read to 90,000 RPM. So nothing in um, drag racing is gonna outspin them or go past their ability. This one here is a what we use for the Strange Ultra case. So if you're unfamiliar with the Strange, Strange Ultra case, it has like a concave style bearing support that actually goes around the pinion. So those, actually require you to move the remove the yoke before you put the actual ring on because you can't get a wrench down in there to tighten it on there. So you'll actually have to pull the pinion yoke off and put it on there. This sensor is a 5 16 thread pattern. Very difficult to find these 5 16 Hall Effect sensors. We carry them, they're very expensive. We have them made custom for that uh, particular piece, but they screw right in and you can slide the wheel so it lines up perfectly with the sensor. So. That's an ultra case sensor. This is what we use for every other style. We also have a nice little nine inch forward bracket that bolts to one of the five pinion support bolts and the sensor goes right in it. It comes with nuts to go on each side. And then we also make one for a Ford 8.8. .8. So while we're talking about sensors, let's talk about gap. So a lot of folks um, call us with questions about setting up gap. So. This red style sensor is uh, actually it's set and designed to run 45 to 60 thousandths in gap. If you get too much more than that, you'll see tons of noise and spe spikes and all that type of stuff. And it'll look like you have a dirty signal. This one, we usually say run between 60 and 90 thousandths of gap. So you can close up the gap to tighten up the signal. You'll actually see it start to smooth out. But if you get it too tight, the run out on the actual wheel can start to if it touches down on the sensor, it's gonna cause an issue. So the biggest thing is running it within its intended gap. 60 to 90 thousandths, 45 to 60 thousandths. Now, let's talk about pull-up resistors. So, sensors on automotive are supposed to be working out of the box and the thing about them is, is there's so many systems that we are trying to get these drive shaft sensors to work with that some require a pull-up resistor and some don't. For instance, the Holly EFI systems used to re not require a pull-up resistor with any of our sensors, and now they do. They've changed the firmware, and something inside has changed uh, with how they have things programmed. So now, uh, on a majority of uh, our applications using this style sensor, and even their sensors, you have to use a pull-up resistor. We send this package of pull-up resistors with every wheel. We have a 1K, a 2.4K, and a 3K and then we put a piece of heat shrink in it. Basically, that pull-up resistor is gonna go between the power and the signal wire on the actual drive shaft sensor. 
So on this ultra case sensor, white is your signal and red is your power. So what that's gonna do is pull up the signal. 1K, I have this listed in our instructions and we have a great instruction manual on our website. It's under the resources tab and it walks you through everything from troubleshooting to initial setup. So if you're running this uh, power, as the, the sensor power as a five volt reference as some systems do, you'll need a 1K resistor. If you're running it as a 12 volt, you'll need a 2.4K resistor. And if you're running a 16 volt, you'll need a 3K pull up resistor. So again, that will go between your red, your power, and your white signal. On this sensor, your power and your signal are different. It just needs to go between those two. And not all systems need them. For instance, I think the race pack has a built-in pull-up resistor. But if for some reason you install this system on your car and uh, you're not getting a signal and you've checked everything else, uh, the pull-up resistor can will help that and give you a signal. Now this sensor actually has a pull-up resistor built in. However, on some systems it still needs a pull-up resistor. It's case by case. We'll be happy to help you work through it. If you give us a call, we'll um, help you troubleshoot anything you have. Drive shaft sensors can sometimes be problematic, but generally speaking, if you follow our instructions, uh, it's always a basic. So let's get to the basics on wiring. So for instance, on this sensor, black is your ground, white is your signal, and red is your signal power. So what does that mean? So white is of course gonna to go to your input of whatever you're using. So that's gonna be what actually tells the computer the data. Red is power and black is ground. Now when I say that, it doesn't mean hook these up to your battery. That can be a noisy signal. That is not a sensor, power, and ground. These two actually need a sensor power and a sensor ground. So it needs to actually come from the system you're using it from. So if you're running a Holly EFI, for instance, you're gonna want to tap into a sensor ground, not just a ground, a sensor ground. That'll be less noisy and that'll actually be configured for a sensor. If you're doing, hooking up the power, it needs to come from a sensor power. So for the Holly, uh, you're looking for a five volt reference. So this needs to come from a five volt reference within your harness an actual sensor signal. Don't pull it from an injector or a coil or a regular 12 volt power accessory or a fuel pump or anything else. It needs to come from a sensor power. I would say about 75% of the issues that we have with this system come from people hooking up power and ground wrong. That means they're hooking this right up to the battery ground or it's right up to the battery power or they're hooking up to a non-sensor ground and power within the system. That's gonna, number one, introduce noise, and number two, it might not work in general. So those, that's the basics. That's what needs to happen for this to work properly. Uh, we get this call four or five times a week and somebody's upset that they got a bad sensor and it's 99.99% never a bad sensor. It's actually just hooked up in the wiring and or the programming when you go to input it into the computer. So for this system to work properly, you need to have a Hall effect sensor. So if you're an 8.8 or 12 volt or a Dana 60 guy, you'll notice there's a big difference in the styles of yokes. Uh, this is a nine inch and this is a Ford 8.8. .8. So when these rear ends were designed, they were never designed to have drive shaft wheel speed sensors on them. Originally the nine inch was designed in a way that made it really conducive to hook this up. An 8.8 on the other hand was not. If you look at the cast version of this yoke, there's basically nowhere to bolt one of these on. Uh, this wheel is 490 thousandths thick, and that means that it needs uh, more space than a typical magnet wheel because you're trying to fit teeth and a bolt in. We didn't want to shrink that bolt any smaller for safety concerns. So as you can see, what the bolt is taking up and this wheel is taking up, there's nowhere to make this thinner. So luckily, Strange Engineering made this wheel that has a spot machined where the factory ones were cast still. And what this does is it gives us extra room between a seal and the end of the yoke that we can actually bolt this to. So on a regular cast 8.8 yoke. This would be cast all the way down to here and just this little space would be machined and the seal actually comes to right here. So there was nowhere to bolt one of these two. So if you're running a Ford 8.8 .8 and want to run one of these 
high resolution drive shaft wheels. You need this, this has an extra area machined into it. The 8.8s, the Dana 60s, the 12 bolts, and the 8.5 10 bolts have this area in their uh, forge style yoke. So this is a U1596 for an 8.8, and you can see our two and a half inch wheel, this is a two and a half inch diameter uh, wheel, goes right on there, tighten it down, and you're in business. So if you don't have that area, Unfortunately, with an 8.8, you're not gonna be able to run the wheel. This yoke is only like 142 bucks. The Mark Williams uh, yoke also has this extra area machined in it, so you're in luck if you have a Mark Williams one. But if you don't have one of those two, you need to upgrade your yoke anyways, because those cast yokes just have a huge ability to break and become catastrophic. So you'll be upgrading to a stronger yoke and giving yourself a room to bolt that to. So we call our drive shaft wheels high definition. And the whole point of that is that we now have 16 pickups instead of two or four. That means we have way better data. The traction control or the data logger can see that data quicker, better, smoother. And that means you can make your car faster and the traction control can work better. So if you're to a point where you're making advanced tables on your Holly or you're hooking up a traction control system or you're getting down to the point where you're looking at your data log trying to improve your 60 foot time or anything in between with an arc module or a grid, where you're pulling and adding timing to make sure your car just as fast as it can possibly be. It's time to look into a high resolution drive shaft sensor from Motion Raceworks. 16 teeth, better, cleaner signal, less noise, and it works great. So anyways, that is a Motion Raceworks high def drive shaft sensor. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned, we got more to come.